I'm Melissa Mira. And I'm Jeff Klein. And we're the filmmakers behind Pin Up Dolls on Ice, and we are chilling with the 13th Wolfman. Yes. <laughs> Our new best friend. Yes. <laughs> and we're on the prowl, also. <laughs> Hey everybody, you know who I am? I'm the 13th Wolfman. I have with me, I have Corinne Kerr. She's in an upcoming movie coming out sometime this summer, Pin Up Dolls on Ice. Welcome to Sit Down, Corinne. Thank you, Wolfie. Thank you. <laughs> so, so you play one of the stronger characters in the upcoming movie, Pin Up Dolls on Ice. Um, yes, I mean, I think that's debatable. I think Malone could probably kick my ass, but... <laughs> But yes, she's a pretty strong woman. Yeah, but you you last longer. I do, I do. I was um, I was very happy about that. Unfortunately, uh, I I couldn't quite make it. I don't know if I should say that. <sighs> no, it's that's it's gonna be well. It's gonna be well till the movie comes out because I can. Like I said, summertime, so you're not giving too much away. Coming up, yeah. Spoiler alert. But um. Yes, I, I've enjoyed getting to play such a strong character. They made they made kind of all of the women on the show be really strong and have quite of a voice and and have a fight. Like none of us are weak or just let themselves be attacked by this man. So I really appreciated that. And I think that's a big influence from the fact that Melissa is also in the movie. Not that a man filmmaker wouldn't be able to create strong women, uh, as proven by my hero Joss Whedon. But uh, but I do think her influence is definitely there in in creating well-rounded female characters. Yeah, you're right about Malone. Malone, she she does the toe-to-toe -to -toe thing with Mo. But I I do love the fact that you know you have a you got to have the strongest ankles in the world for running around in these platforms that you're running around in. And I I think it was Jeff that said that there was an incident where you almost slipped one time. What, um, that I almost slipped? Oh, um, yeah, it happened quite a few times, actually. There's one scene where we're running across a parking lot towards a car, and, and the camera is just further away, and we just have to, like, bolt it. Like, Mo is after us, right? So we're just trying to get to the car and get away, and it was me and Kyla. And every time that we, we did that scene, the first couple of times we took it, my shoes would just fly off my feet because I was running so fast and they were getting so dented and so loose that I would just lose them. So eventually, Melissa had to put rubber bands around um, my shoes to keep them in place on my, as I was running. And I was pretty sure I was going to break an ankle. But I didn't, so I'm very proud. It's incredible what adrenaline can make you do because even though... Like, the characters have adrenaline, but also us as actresses, when you're trying to just run as right. fast as you can across the field, yeah, you get yourself all pumped up, and and then you're like, whoa, I'm able to do things that I never would have imagined. So. Now, I also know that uh, the that Jeff and Melissa kept William from meeting every, anybody, really. I mean, he, he was on set, but he was, like, walking around grumbling and growling and kind of staying in character. Yes, uh, William stays in character the whole time when he's on set until he, he killed you. Uh, he'll only introduce himself. You know, when you start a movie, you, you have a get together, people meet, people hang out, you know, people's names. But in this case, he would only come on set. We would only see him when he was in character. He had his outfit on, he has his makeup on. If we had to break for lunch, he would stand in the corner, eat his meal all creep like, and stare at you from across the room. Um, and only once he had killed you would he go up to you and say, like, hi, I'm Bill. And you would get to actually, <laughs> to actually meet the actor. So that's a different, you have a completely different relationship with, with the person on set than you do with all the other characters that you actually also know on a personal level. Because we were shooting that movie, like, on location for a month. So it was a little bit like summer camp. We all spent all that time together and got to know each other really well, except for William. Nobody really got to know him until the end. <laughs> yeah, so so when you finally when you finally do meet Bill, yeah, are you a little intimidated? 
Um, yeah, definitely. It was it was strange because you've you've done all these things with him, and and then you finally. And, and, but he's so nice, like he's so different than his character, which like the contrast is is a little startling. Um, like he'll play the guitar and he'll sing song, and he's so sweet and sophisticated and so removed from his mo character that it, it's it's easy to separate them once you've gotten to know William. But, but it's that first it's it's that first instance, you know. It's like. Uh, who am I meeting? <laughs> no, for sure. He definitely scared me on set. I definitely, like, I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm that easily scared, but uh, shooting in that location, like you've seen it in the movie, it, it's already pretty scary. Like we're in a trailer park in the middle of the woods and, and we had to shower in the same showers where Lauren gets murdered. Like all of those things we use every day. So as you're showering, you can't help but think about the fact that Mo murdered someone in this very shower and hope that that will not be your fate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so you, you said on the live show that uh, you've been doing this for a long time, like going back to when you were a kid, you were doing like plays and stuff. Did mm -hmm. you, but did you always want to, did, I mean, being a child actor is one thing, but when you transition into adulthood, did you say, okay, horror or, or just anything, you know? Um, I'm definitely open to a lot of genre. I'm not necessarily saying, oh, I only want to do horror, although I've always wanted to be in a horror movie because they scare me a lot. Like, I'm somebody who will actually react a lot of, to them. So I always wanted to see how that gets done, and that was really exciting to get to, peel, to be a part of it. Um, but I, I'm not... Yeah, I'm hoping you do more movies. I, <laughs> I, I love the entire cast of this movie. Um, thought that everyone did a great job, and, you know... Melissa herself said that she wasn't really an actress and she did a great job playing Malone. She really did. She was great. We were surprised. Actually, before the whole movie started, I knew that Melissa was producing and co-directing a movie. And then she was also um, like the production manager and she was taking care of costume. Like she picked all of our costumes and they were all yeah. amazing. Like they all fit us and work with her personalities and the different characters and, you know, accessories and everything. And, and then I was like, she's going to also play a character in a movie? Like, that's going to be confusing. Like, she's never going to be able to do, like, behind the camera, in front of the camera. But she did. She pulled it off, and she did an amazing job. So my hat's off to her, because she wore a lot of hats. And she also did makeup. Yeah. No, she did makeup. It's true. She did, like, the special effects and everything. Special involved. effects makeup, yeah. Yeah. And the body, and the body makeup for uh, Ashley. Yes. Yeah. You know. I wasn't there, though, because that was a closed set. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I guess you just don't want a bunch of, you know, people standing around, you know, <laughs> gawking. Just, just by respect, like, you know you're going to end up watching the movie, but the same way that when you, you're you shooting, like, say, say, a sex scene or something like that, people are going to watch it. But in the moment, it's so intimidating to have 40 people just, like, staring at you. So by respect, you just stay off set, and she gets to have kind of that. that I don't know if I could do it. Honestly, I mean, to, to, to have people just stand around while you're, Naked, you know, naked as a Jayhawk. Yeah. Could you? I mean, I don't know. I've never, I've never done it. Like, I don't really, I, I haven't done nudity in the movie or uh, on stage. I've only done underwear, you know, which is suggestive, but isn't okay, well. all of it. So really, you would have to speak with girls who've done it. But I, I definitely find them extremely strong and brave because that must be, you must feel extremely vulnerable. Especially in the context of a horror movie where you're about to get, you know, murdered by this, by this serial killer. And on top of it, you're naked. So that's... Yeah, no doubt. You're, you're thinking to yourself, I got to make sure I hit the gym that day. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a salad for lunch, you know? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I, I know that you said earlier that you have something that you're kind of working on, but you can't talk about. Yeah. Which is fine. But uh, no, I just, I mean, I, I'm just throwing that out there to the people that are going to watch and let them know that, you know, the reason that you're not talking about it. And But um, what about plays? Uh, do you have, uh, you say you like doing theater. What are some of the plays, you, you know, would, that you would like to do? That I would like to do? Yeah. 
Um, well, one of my favorite plays I actually got to be in uh, last year, so that was pretty exciting. It's called Closer. There's also a movie version of it, so I got to do that. That was that was like my dream character, my dream play. So that's like off my list. But um, I really enjoy Shakespeare. However, <laughs> I know I'm such a sad no, no, I, 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 I it's. I'm not laughing at you, honestly. My cousin is also, she's a Shakespearean actress in New York. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. And They're so awesome. everything, everything, everything she does is Shakespeare. And I'm like, you know, I mean, it's nothing else. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I you know, well, that's not true. She did do like a season of um, one year they did a tour where they were doing um, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Okay, yeah. Yeah, she was the White Queen. Okay. You know, but yeah, Shakespeare, I, I, I like it, but I don't understand it all. It's uh, it's way over my head. That's that's the challenge with Shakespeare is that you have to make people understand what you're saying because it's all English, and you have to get the audience engaged. And if you've seen when to see Shakespeare, you didn't understand it. That means they didn't do their jobs properly. <laughs> but, okay. um. The problem, the problem that I have as a female actress is that there, as much as I enjoy things like Shakespeare, there aren't a lot of female characters. There's like one per play. It's mostly male in all the, the classic theater. Really? So yeah, like if you think of like Macbeth, then there's like a bunch of male characters and there's one big female character, Macbeth. If you think of Hamlet, it's all male characters except for Ophelia. Like, because back in the day when Shakespeare wrote his plays, there were only male actors. So he wrote female characters to be played by male actors. Yeah, Those I knew were that. Actresses. So therefore, he didn't write a lot of, fem- like, a lot of female roles because it had to be a man wearing a dress doing it. Yeah. Huh. I, I honestly always thought that there were more, I mean, because I could name, well, I could name four female characters, but I couldn't tell you what plays they were from until you just did it. You know, it's like Lady Macbeth, Ophelia, Portia was another one, and Juliet. You know, and I know which one Juliet's from. You know, so. Yeah, that one's easier. Yeah. But I, I honestly, I thought Ophelia was also from, was from Macbeth. So it just shows you where you know I, it, I tried reading it in high school. That was a long time ago. It's, <laughs> hard to, it's really hard to read though. Like I have trouble just sitting down and reading it. It's a lot easier if you. It was written to be acted, so it's a lot easier to see it being done in front of you than to sit down and read it and analyze it. What they try to do, make you do at school is not really what it was made for. So and, it's a lot easier to see. And he wrote a lot of plays. I mean, it's not just, you know, it's... But uh, Taming of the Shrew, Merchant of Venice, yep. you know, um, Henry VIII, Richard III. Well, I... Henry the Fourth. Henry the Fourth. Okay. Julius Caesar. Yeah. Julius Caesar. Yeah. So I mean, I just like I said, I just assumed that there was a lot more female parts. Yeah. That that's got to be tough, though. I mean, if you're just a, if there's just like one part per play and it's just you. Well, a lot of people in modern days, what they do is they adapt certain male characters to be a girl instead, uh, because they want to be able to have more girls. But, I mean, yes, most of those stories are war stories. You know, if you're thinking about Julius Caesar or, Hen- like, all the Henrys. So, obviously, it's, like, the king and all of the soldiers and all of these characters, they're all male. And then you have, like, somebody's wife, and that's a woman. But you don't always want to play somebody's wife. Like, you want to play a full, well-rounded character. So You want to play Joan of Arc. Yes! Yes! <laughs> that- amazing exactly the strong female lead it's like yeah th- like i don't have any lines <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there are few far between you really have to to work hard to, to find your group but there there is quite a lot of great theater at least here in montreal like i can't really complain one of my favorite plays uh when i was in high school i took a theater arts class and the the teacher forced us for, for part of our grade we had to go see uh, two plays for each semester. Okay. So that was like 50% of your grade. Okay. Just so, to go see it or you had to write about it? No, you had to go see it. You had to come back with a playbill or a ticket to prove that you went to see it. Okay. You know, 
So he's like, okay, you don't just say, oh, yeah, I went and saw this. But uh, one of my favorite plays, that I, I fell in love with it. You know, I would have never gone to this any other time, but it was Bus Stop. I don't know it. You don't know it? No. Mm. I feel really sad. Well, there is a movie called Bus Stop with Marilyn Monroe. Okay. It was adapted from the play. So, I mean, check out the movie if you want, you know. And, but, and you liked it? Oh, I loved it. It's it, it's just such a rich uh, rich play. I mean, it just the characters were there. I think there's only two females in that, but I think the whole I think the whole play only has like five or six characters total. Yeah, that makes sense. Almost half. Say that again. I said it's almost half of the characters, but yeah, yeah. That and I saw a Peter Pan that same semester. Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> ne- ne- never seen that play live at all either. And I was like, okay, this is this is different. <laughs> did he like fly on top of the stage? Uh, or did they just fake that. No, he flew on the he flew on the stage, and then they had like a little beam of light for Tinkerbell. Oh, oh that's cute. I like you know, that. So, some guy up in the up in the tower, you know, shooting a little beam of light out there. Because you can't really have a teeny tiny fairy on stage. You, you could try, okay. you know. Yeah. It's not going to work, but you could try. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Well, I'm glad that you enjoyed theater, though. Yeah, well, I yeah. There's there's some that I mean, I wouldn't mind. I'd like, like we said on the live show, wouldn't mind seeing uh, Evil Musical. Which you know? one? Evil <laughs> Dead, the musical. Oh, yeah. I'm a What? I, I haven't seen it. Oh, uh, you it. haven't seen it either? Okay. Just William. That's cool. Oh, man. So, uh, what? what's your... Let me... I gotta... Let me see if I get this question right. Um, what is your favorite worst movie of all time? My favorite worst movie of all time? Yeah. <laughs> Probably the room. <laughs> the room. The room, yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm blanking on this one. Really? Yeah. I, I thought everybody knew how horrible but delightful the room is. It's this really horrible movie that was made. Oh, now I'm gonna forget everybody's name because I'm nervous. But um, this guy like produced, directed, and starred in this movie that he pretty much paid for himself, and it's it's just. It's a train wreck. It's horrible. Oh, wow. And people have screening. Like, they get together and they screen it and they they laugh. And, like, actors from the movie come to screenings and watch it with them. And But it's, it's yeah, it, it's kind of like when you p- pass a car accident and you just can't help but look. It's that. Because it's, it's, like, the story doesn't make sense. At the point, they lose certain things. They couldn't shoot certain things. So they just pretended that, okay, oh, well, now the person is... That's it, you know. Now I need to see the room. I mean, yeah, I never heard. I honestly, never heard of it. So that's funny. Uh, and you have nothing to be nervous about. You're doing fine. <laughs> so the what's the best, oddest, or worst thing to happen to you while in show business? So that the, was the worst thing that's ever happened. But I'm trying to think of a cool, the oddest thing. Well, good good anecdote from Put Up Dolls on Ice. I don't know if Jeff and Melissa have already spoken to you about this, but in the scene where Mo runs after us into the trailer, okay, um, there was a way to exit the trailer through a trap into the floor. So they wanted us to do that. Like, he comes in, runs after us. We escape through the trap, and but you, we couldn't really fit through the trap, so we just like you know duck down the trap and in the camera, we'll afterwards fake and you guys will come out the trap and run away. But we're in this tiny trailer, and Mo comes on with his big axe, and I got terrified. So I actually crawl, like I actually crawled through that trap, and as I came out, banged my head really hard on the side of the trailer, <laughs> and then just fell to my knees and started like shaking, crying because I was like pumped with adrenaline and with the pain of banging my head. And they had to cut the scene, and unfortunately, that ruined that shot because, um, yeah. 
I was still in the frame as Mo came out and smashed the trailer window. <laughs> yeah. So that that was not a fun day on set, but you know. Okay, and <laughs> all right, we're having a heck of a time tonight because of a uh, technical difficulty. So I think we'll cut it short. Okay, no problem. You know, um, if you can tell people where they could find you on social media. Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter under Cake Bites, and I'm on Instagram under my name, so Chatin Kirk, and on Facebook under the same Chatin Kirk. Cool. And with Corinne Kerr, I'm the 13th Wolfman. I'm on the prowl. <laughs>